Okay, I want to do a walk around of this. Uh, this is a KY Models 100-inch uh, uh, bird dog, quarter scale. All up weighs about 15 pounds with two 5,000 six cells hooked in series. And these will fly an easy 10 minutes just scale flying. Okay? Easy 10 minutes. I've got it set at 9 and give me a couple of go rounds if I need it. Okay? I'm running a 1710 Zor prop on a rim fire. You can't see it, but a rim fire 160 motor, which is about that big around and about that long, which will handle 12 cell. So then I had to get a special ESC that would handle 12 cell. So I got the Castle Creations. 80 amp edge high voltage ESC. Then I had, I found out I had to get a, I knew I had an Opto, uh, didn't have a BEC built into the, uh, to the ESC, so I got to get a Castle Creations 50 volt input BEC, which has two outputs, and you have to use both outputs. 5 volt outputs to uh, to run the receiver. So uh, so then I'm using the Aura 8, the Flex Innovations Aura 8 uh, stabilizer and control with two spectrum type uh, satellite receivers plugged into it. I'm using uh, all new uh, high-tech servos or analog servos and they're uh, 625 metal gear servos all metal gear I had to uh, to reinforce the tail the, there was a lot of accounts on uh, the on the pages about the the elevator being susceptible to flutter. So I took the bottom of the elevator, the covering off the bottom, and I put a, a, a wedge in every joint, glued it in real good, and then recovered it. And then I put a brace on the bottom and a brace on the top. Now it's not supposed to have a brace on the top, but the results of the flutter with these, there's a couple of videos on the tube, and uh, the result of the flutter was catastrophic. So I put a I put a brace underneath, and this is actual uh, strut bracing you can get at the hobby shop. And I put a block of hardwood inside here, a block of hardwood in here, a block of hardwood that goes clear across inside here. So it's all bolted together all the way around using good wood. Then I changed and I put a, um, a SIG um, tail wheel on it, which is really good. And I turned around and put all ball joints on everything and a different pull-pull cable than what they sent me. And then I used a uh, industrial strength epoxy to glue the tail in. I think that was part of the problems with the people who were having failures. They probably didn't glue the tail in very well. Also, the, the failures I saw with the tail were people flying with uh, gas engines and flying pretty fast. There's a lot more vibrations. This plane does not vibrate at all. It's just really smooth. Now come around here in front and I'll tip up this side and you can see the, uh, the bottom. They had the most awful struts that were supplied with it. Nobody uses them, so I went to the hobby shop and got some strut, metal strut material, and I made a special fixture for it up here, so it's in there good and solid. I used the, the original uh, attachment points at the bottom, and uh, 
The next step is I have a set of two rockets for each side made up. I just have to figure out how to mount them. And uh, then maybe a Mr. Sound. So, love this plane. It's an ARF, but it took like three weeks to put it together because it was the, the low end of the ARF scale. There was a lot of stuff to do and redo. So, um, but I love it. I absolutely love it with the R8 set up. It set up right, flies perfect. This is the L19 Bird Dog, first flown in 1949 and was used extensively in the Vietnam War. So, uh, enjoy. Oh, another thing, I, this hole in the top is big enough to get both hands into to put the batteries in. There's a perfect place for the batteries. The batteries, it takes that much weight to balance it out. So, uh, really lucky. I can get in there, then nothing special. There's a little door in the side of it, but uh, you can't really get to anything on that. So, very good. The L19.